Hey guys, Savannah Bell here with My Massage World, and today's video is about how in order to be a real boss, a constructive and efficient business owner, and for your business to be successful, you need to treat yourself like an employee. Now, no lot of therapists start their business with this idea of freedom in mind. You get to make your own schedule, run a business how you think it should be run, see the clients that you want to see, use the techniques that you want to use, basically have complete control over your professional life, right? And while most of that is true, there's one very big problem with this. You're kind of always employed, sort of. Whether you own the business or work for someone else, you have a job to do. You have duties to complete. If you fail, the business suffers. So even though you may wear the title of business owner, you still work within and for your business. If you fail to do something, the business suffers, right? If a barista at Starbucks can't keep orders straight, they're going to screw it up for not only the customers, but the other employees and the business itself too. If an animator for Disney doesn't get their job done on time, what happens? The movie might not get to release when it's supposed to. So it's the boss's job to step in and make sure that these jobs are done, that those deadlines are met, that things are accomplished. This is why you need to treat yourself like a boss would treat an employee. Why is it that you'll feel worse if you let down someone else like your boss than if you let yourself down? Why do we put more stock in what somebody else thinks of us than what we think of ourselves? One of the biggest issues that I see with therapists who are struggling to grow their practice is that they're not hitting goals. They're not hitting deadlines. Heck, most of the time, there aren't any deadlines or goals to be had. Um, it's just some arbitrary, I want to grow my business or I want more clients. And while it's okay, you got to get more specific. Okay, do you really think that any successful company just has some arbitrary goals with no timeline, no specific plan in place, no metrics to measure where they are in relation to that goal? No, absolutely not. So I'm going to give you two concepts that you need to focus on through five steps to start getting serious and really treating yourself like a boss would treat an employee. Basically, how you're going to hold yourself accountable. Because here's the thing. While we may not think that skipping a week or a month of our newsletter or slacking off on social media, marketing um, here or there, or not attending a networking event because oh, it just didn't feel like it, singularly, those may not be a big deal. But it's the cumulative effect of doing these sorts of small missteps over and over and over again. It really comes down to accountability as a business owner. That's what really separates those who succeed from those who just keep dreaming of success. If you can look at a to-do list that never seems to end and be like, eh, I'll get to it later. Or you don't hit a goal that you set and you think, oh, well, I'll do better next time. Yeah, probably not. And this may sound harsh and I'm sorry, but sometimes you need some tough love. So here I am. Um, because if you're not holding yourself accountable right this minute, what makes you think that you're going to be a different person and suddenly get the motivation to do it later? You're probably not. So start now, if you're consistently not hitting your goals, there are one of two possibilities, and that's it. Either your goals are the problem, or you are. Either you're setting unrealistic and unachievable goals, or you simply aren't disciplined enough to get to them. So, here's the two concepts for you to focus on to get you serious about your business. Goal setting and project management. So, goal setting. Here's a little exercise to get you going. And you can tweak this however it will work for you and your business. It's a five-step plan, okay? So step one, I want you to set a 30-day goal. Why 30 days? Because it's not that far away and you can feel the pressure. <laughs> if I gave you 60 or 90 days or even did a one-year goal to start, you would procrastinate and probably forget the entire thing. So if you can't set and achieve short-term goals, there is no way that you're gonna set and achieve a long-term goal. So in only a month, what would you like to have achieved? It's not that far away, so be realistic, of course. But I want you, right now, to define exactly what it is you hope to have completed. Maybe you want to average five more clients per week, or make you know X number of dollars by then, or have all of your social media posts scheduled for the next three months, whatever. Maybe it's personal and you want to have saved a certain amount or pay off a certain debt. Whatever it is, I want you to put it in your calendar. Right now, pause this video, Go get your calendar, pull it up on your phone, set a reminder, whatever you usually do for an appointment, put it down one month from today. By five o'clock that day, this goal has to be achieved. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Seriously, pause the video. 
Step two, decide a punishment. If you were working for someone else and they gave you a perfectly achievable, realistic goal and a deadline, what would happen if you wasted half a day binging on Netflix and decided not to show up to work or otherwise failed to complete that task by that deadline? You would probably be fired. Okay, at the very least, you would be disciplined in some way. Written up, privileges revoked, docked pay, things like that. So I want you to set up a punishment for yourself. If you don't achieve that goal, what happens? Will you take away your weekend getaway that you have planned? Or maybe you have to go a month without social media. Or you have to donate $200 to an organization you hate. I actually saw that um, sort of thing as a workout motivation in an app, I think. Anyway, you have to have some skin in the game. There has to be some repercussion if you don't achieve that goal. If you don't make that deadline. Again, what would happen to you if you had a boss? What would you do if an employee of yours failed to do their job? Step three, decide a reward. When you achieve that 30-day goal, what do you get to do? Maybe it's take a weekend trip somewhere that you've wanted to go for a while. Maybe it's a spa day for yourself. Maybe it's a new outfit that you've been wanting but didn't feel like you could splurge on. Maybe you go to your favorite restaurant and eat a big fat dessert. That's my vote. <laughs> um, whatever can motivate you, just come up with some reward. Again, just like a boss offering a bonus if you complete a project, having that reward at the end can be fantastic motivation to push you through. Step four, plan your strategy. And this brings us to our project management phase. Now that you have a deadline, along with a consequence and a reward, you need to start planning out the details of how to accomplish that goal. So let's say that your goal is to have three months worth of marketing content completed and scheduled in the next 30 days. That would put you well ahead so that no matter what your schedule looks like for those next three months, no matter what craziness life throws at you, those social media posts, blog posts, newsletters, all of that good stuff, it's already done and it's going to go out automatically. So now you need to break that down into weekly goals. If you're doing three months worth, it's one week to plan it all and then a week for each month's content. So on your calendar, set your daily and weekly goals and deadlines. Maybe you have a certain number of items to complete each day, or maybe it's a time spent sort of thing. So you spend at least 30 to 45 minutes each day working on this, like truly focused working on this. <laughs> um, figure out what's realistic in your schedule and what you can honestly commit to doing. At the end of each of those days and weeks, I want you to put some small punishments and rewards. I know this seems weird, but it's basics of psychology and motivation and behavioral modification. So we can train ourselves to do better, to be better. If I don't get to have a glass of wine at the end of the day because I couldn't be bothered to take 20 minutes to work on a project, that's my own fault. And I might just squeak out that work at the end of the day so that I can have a glass of wine. Or if at the end of the week I can't go see the movie that I had planned on seeing and go on a date night with my husband, if I don't finish my work, I'm going to be bummed. So I'm going to push through it. These little things can keep you motivated and working every single day towards your goal. It's not some big push. It's those little things every single day, those choices to pick up your phone and scroll through Facebook instead of hopping on Canva and making some blog graphics. It's sleeping in when you don't really need to instead of waking up early to knock out that project first thing in the morning so that the rest of your day can be spent however you want it to be spent. It's those really small behavior modifications that make the biggest differences in the long run. So last, but most definitely not least, step five, do the work. Every single day for the next 30 days, I want you working toward that goal. Hold yourself accountable like a boss would and make sure that you're implementing those rewards and punishments as needed. They're not real if you're not actually going to do them, okay? Those daily and weekly rewards and punishments keep you managing that project and that goal constantly. So instead of working toward this big arbitrary goal of I want more clients, you're taking active steps every single day to get there by completing a very specific task. A big part of this project management phase is that accountability and measuring how far along you're coming. Those metrics, whether it's a certain amount of time per day or a number of clients per week or an amount of money made, those are all going to keep you focused on the goal. 30 days is not a long time, so take these five steps starting today and get to it. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week. Don't wait for next month. What makes you think you're going to hold yourself more accountable then than you do now? Why does that version of you seem so different than the version today? It's not. The only way that that 30 day later version is going to be different is if you take the steps right this minute to make changes every day so you are different by the time that 30 days rolls around.
And if you need some motivation and outside accountability, come join us in our new Facebook group. It's free. Um, we're having a seven-day accountability challenge starting next week. So you can tackle your first week's goals with some backup from a lot of other amazing massage practice owners. So let's get to work making changes in your practice and taking actual real strides toward making yourself and your business successful. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you have a question you want answered or a subject that you want covered, let me know and I will make a video for you. As always, check us out at mymassageworld.com. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and stay tuned for more videos.